Hi guys, I hope everyone's doing well today. Have you ever wondered what it takes to frame a painting? Well, in today's video, I'll be showing you the steps and behind the scenes of what it takes to frame this self-portrait I did of myself. I'll see you in the frame shop. Welcome to the frame shop. So let's get started. So the first decision you have to make is whether you'll use a float frame or a backloaded frame. As the name suggests, the canvas floats in the middle of the frame that it sits in, and this effect is achieved by having a gap between the painting and the frame. So this is what it's going to look like. Usually I'll use 3 eighths of an inch between the painting and the molding. Typically, for works on canvas, I'll lean towards this option of framing. For the backloaded frame, the painting is fit from behind and the frame sits on the surface of the painting. Please be aware if you use this option, anywhere from 1 8 of an inch to 3 16 of an inch of the painting edge will be covered by the frame rabbit. And this is what it looks like. So if it's important for you to show the painting from edge to edge, please use the float frame option. Now that the basics are out of the way, this is the frame I've chosen for this self-portrait. It's a float frame option and it has a silver leaf finish. And I think it really complements the blues of the painting. Okay, so I'll take you behind the curtain and show you how this frame is made. The first step is to get an accurate measurement of the painting. So it's 23 3 quarters by 24 and an eighth. So next I'll have to add 3 quarters to each of those measurements to account for the 3 eighths of an inch gap that I need all around the painting. So I'll see you downstairs in the cut room. I have the measurements and I have the molding here. I'll just unwrap it. Now that I have the first two corners glued together, I'll let them dry for a bit and then move them on to corner clamps where I'll join the final two corners.
Now that I have the four corners glued, we're almost finished. All I have to do is underpin and then putty up the corners. Now we're ready to fit the painting into the frame. The painting sits about a quarter inch below the surface of the frame, which is perfect. Now I'm just gonna add some spacers between the painting and the frame to ensure that there's an even gap. Now I'm going to pre-drill some holes from underneath so I could fix the painting into place. Now that the painting is fit, I just have to put some hang hardware on it. <clears throat> I'll show you two different types of hang hardware that can be placed on a piece like this. The first type of hang hardware is the strap hanger, and that's placed on either side of the, of the frame, and it hangs from both of these hooks. So it basically alleviates any pressure from one hanging point that a wire has. So I'll be screwing these into place. The second method is the traditional hang wire and typically the fixed points will be a third of the way down from the top of the piece. So right now it's about 25 three quarters. Let's call it 24 so a third of the way down is 8 inches down. So those are my two fixed points for my actual pieces of hardware. <clears throat> so these are the bits of hardware. It doesn't look like much, but they, they could take quite a bit of weight.
If you're using this method on a float frame, I usually inset the hang hardware into the painting itself so when it hangs, it, th the frame lies flush against the wall. <coughs> now for the wire. So that's it. These are the two methods of hanging I would use for this type of frame. The traditional wire or two strap hangers. So here's the final piece. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please write them down below. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.